Hey everybody, welcome to Instagram Live on Platform. My name is Stephen Frost, I'm an artist, I live here in Boulder, Colorado, and today we're going to be here in my studio, right here in Boulder. Hey, welcome Esther, it's so nice to see you. Hey everybody, welcome, hold on, I'll wave back at you. Wave, wave, you guys are great, awesome, thanks for seeing you here. Hey, today I have a really amazing assistant here who's going to be helping me. Oops, here he is. It's my camera assistant. It's my husband, Jed. And um, we're going to be doing a bunch of different demos today. All right, wait. I'm going to change my orientation. Not that, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. The very funny. Very funny. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right, now we are Martha Stewart live, right? This is great. Okay, everybody. I am going to be doing a couple um, different things. But first, I just want to understand that we understand that this is a really difficult time for everybody right now and um so we're here so that you guys can stay home and have a sense of connection with the artist community um around denver and around the country i know some of you are joining us from all over the place um as a community i just want you guys to know that platform in denver they're an amazing lifeline for people. They're providing all sorts of different services. They're also employing uh, several artists and they provide internships through the Art Lab program uh, for students in the city of Denver who don't have art programs at their high school. So they're doing all sorts of amazing stuff, reaching out to those students and really helping them stay connected together. So I'm happy if any of you are students here joining me today uh, to do that. I am actually a professor at CU Boulder in the Department of Media Studies in the College of Media, Communication and Information. I had to say that, of course, or I would get in trouble. Trouble. But um, uh, but I work with a lot of different students, and I'm actually a resident in the Art Lab program this summer, hopefully, um, or in the future at some point. Uh, so I'll be working with the Art Lab students again. And they're an amazing group. So if you guys don't know anything about the Art Lab program, uh, it's incredible. They provide all this great programming where high school students who don't have art programs can work directly with professional artists. It's a kind of opportunity that's just so unique and I'm super excited to be part of it. So thank you Platform and Art Lab for having me here today. So I'm gonna do two different demos today and we're gonna do a little bit of a studio visit if that's cool with you guys. Is that cool? Waves, claps, waves, claps. I've been teaching a lot of Zoom classes lately. I guess if you guys haven't heard this, Zoom is the hot new thing. And so I always have to teach uh, very tired college students on Zoom. And I'm always like, and then Zoom has two options. One is a thumbs up uh, emoji that you can do. And the other is a clap emoji for the students. So I'm always like, give me the emojis. <laughs> it's, it's You're great. getting claps. I do. Oh, I'm getting claps. Good. Yeah. Thanks for your claps emojis, everybody. Snaps to you. I wish we had snaps emojis or like nail emojis. I really like those uh, fingernail uh, nail salon emojis. They're amazing. Okay. So our agenda today is I'm going to show you all a couple different masks. One mask requires only a t-shirt and scissors. If you have um, a knife that's very sharp, you could use that as well if you don't have scissors. I'm going to model it. Hold on, ready? I'm going to do a reveal. This is like Project Runway reveal moment. Oops, I'm going to take my hat off. And... right? So this is not an N95 mask, in case you guys didn't know that. So all the masks that we're going to be making here today, we're going to be making two. This one and all right, ready? Nah, I feel like I'm Grimes walk in my mask like I could be in like a really cute music video with my face masks and this one so this one is actually designed by a biologist and a artist and I found the design on Instructables so if you search cloth face mask on Instructables you can get the, this design that I'm going to be using today this design is also posted on the Colorado sewing workshop Facebook page because they use it for a demo just a few days ago um, and uh, we can see if maybe we can post that Instructable on our platform page for y'all as well. Okay, so I'm going to make this one and then this one. But let's start off by telling you guys a little bit about some of the materials that you're going to need today to make this 
face mask, which will not protect you from coronavirus, unfortunately. Neither of these actually will. Really what they're about is like preventing people from breathing on each other. And that's essentially what it is. Because of course you could be a carrier of uh, COVID-19 without knowing it, right? You could be asymptomatic. So the idea of everybody wearing face masks, the real thing that that's gonna protect you from is from breathing on somebody else. As far as breathing in um, COVID-19 in air particles, t-shirt material, like this, I mean, this is a cotton, this is t-shirt material. It can filter some particles, like dust particles it can filter, but it's not fine enough to filter out something like COVID-19. Um, I forget, if you look on the Instructables site, it has all the like biology terms. Um, I have a lot of art degrees. I haven't really taken a science class since the late 90s so i'm not going to go into the biology details and friend like i know all those things we can do science 101 in a bit <laughs> we can do science 101 in a bit so the microns or whatever don't go through this so the idea also is this if we use these masks to not breathe on each other that's going to leave all the n95 and the more professional masks that do prevent breathing in coronavirus for medical and emergency professionals who are working directly with people who are suffering from corona or COVID-19. So that's why we're making these masks today. Also, you know, we're in a very uncertain time and everybody walking around in masks feels very apocalyptic, doesn't it? Okay. Um, Is this actually a performance art workshop? <laughs> it's always a performance art workshop. So I'm gonna do a studio tour, but first I wanna get you guys, notify you guys of some of the tools that you need in your, uh, the, the things that you're gonna need. If you're gonna make the basic face mask, the no sew mace face mask, all you're gonna need is a t-shirt. Now make sure your t-shirt is washed, right? All the fabric and stuff we're using today is recently washed. And if you give away face masks to somebody, you definitely wanna wash them in hot water and put them in a hot dryer first because this is not sterile, <laughs> okay? This is actually a shirt I got from Goodwill a few years ago and it's just been sort of hanging out in my studio. But today we're gonna use a different shirt because I maybe still want this shirt. I haven't decided. So a t-shirt is what you need and a pair of scissors. Okay. This is all you need to make the first mask. Our measuring tool is going to be a human hand. Okay. These three things, hand, scissors, t-shirt. So if you need to go get those right now, grab them somewhere in your house. Okay. I'm going to put these to the side. Okay. Our second mask, if you guys are doing this, you're gonna want to get the, you're gonna want to get the Instructables. This is a miniature version that I printed out because it's so cute. This is the miniature version of the pattern that we're gonna be using. This is the full size version of the pattern we're gonna be using. Okay, so you'd wanna go find, this is on Instructables cloth face mask. That's what this is if you wanna Google it. And it's the one that looks like this. Okay, for this project, to make this mask, things that you're gonna need, once again, scissors, you'll need these. You'll need a rotary cutter, if you have one. You, if you don't have one, it's totally fine. You'll also need unicorn scissors. If you don't have unicorn scissors, you absolutely cannot make this project, so it's over. Just turn on us, no more. No, anyway, you need these really cute, these are embroidery scissors and trimming scissors, which I love to use for good luck. Aren't they so cute? love these. These are definitely a 3 a.m. internet purchase. Like the algorithms were like, you might like this unicorn, these unicorn scissors. And I was like, yes, algorithms, you know me well. I do like these unicorn scissors and I will purchase them. Okay. Other things you need, some sort of marking device. So you could use this. It's not going to be very accurate. You can use a pencil. Those are really cool. I love this pencil markers, whatever you use as a marking device. That's gonna to be to copy your um, pattern onto the fabric. Okay, you need just a few more things. A sewing machine. This is my 1970s Bernina Mimatic. Which Does it is, have a name? Um, you know, You've I- You've not given it a name? I haven't named it yet. Oh, shade. Um, I wish I knew the name of the woman who owned it before me on Craigslist because she smoked like a chimney and I had to sort of air this machine out for quite a while before I could use it without getting a headache. How many cigarettes do you have to smoke to have it embedded in metal? 
I think you smoke a lot <laughs> to make the sewing machine smell like cigarettes. It was totally clean, but like the insides like reeked of like, it was amazing. But now I have a really amazing <laughs> sewing machine from Craigslist for almost nothing. It was very affordable. Okay, so sewing machine, thread. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can use a hand needle for this, but I'm just gonna say that like, it's gonna take you a little while if you're gonna be hand sewing this, so get a thread and a needle, okay? And Tiger King. And yeah, you definitely want to be watching Tiger King while you do it. Or hey, there's also a, po a podcast called Joe is Exotic that Tiger King was actually inspired by. So you could, um, if you didn't want to be having your eyes on a screen all the time and you're sick of it, you could listen to the Joe Exotic podcast. It's from Wondery. They didn't pay me for that. Okay. Um, all right. So we the, the, the very important thing that you're going to need to, I'm going to Martha Stewart reach down, is some fabric. Okay, so choosing your fa your mask fabric is really important. This fabric, which I think is beautiful, is actually really, you can see it's like really transparent. I can almost see my fingers through it. It's really good at protecting you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is, this is not like the most ideal for COVID. I actually made this as an example of what not to do. You see this, I made this out of some old uh, gym shorts. Uh, this is just for fashion. This is the one that really makes me look like Grimes. This is my workout outfit. So athleisure is not compatible <laughs> with works. social distancing? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, so what I'd actually suggest is if you don't have, um, the thing that you shouldn't do is to go, I mean, you should support local businesses, but right now, like, don't go out and buy fabric for this. Find whatever you have. My mom gave me a set of king-sized sheets um, a few years ago that were beautiful, but they didn't really match our house, but I love them. So I've been using them for, for scrap fabric forever. I've used them on so many projects. Who knew how far a king set of king size sheets can really go? So if Wait, you... does your mom know how to follow something on Instagram yeah, live? Yeah, mom knows I did that. She okay. loves it. I've used it in a bunch of projects. Okay. Um, she knows, her and I think alike. She's like, Steve will like this fabric. And she was right. I do. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, these are some old bed sheets. And so bed sheets actually, these ones have a really high thread count. It's a very tight weave. They're cotton. They're easy to wash. I can put them in the dryer. That is great. Okay, so scissors, cotton. You might want some needles, okay? Other thing that you're gonna need is, that I like to have, is some kind of elastic to tie your mask on. Now, I'm sure that most of you don't have four-way stretch elastic. That's a bit extra. <laughs> yeah. I have these because I made uh, balaclava masks, actually, earlier in the year for uh, for our Building 61. Um, I don't have my Building 60. Oh, I have my Building 61 t-shirt. Building 61, which is where I do uh, free sewing classes once a month when we get back to all of this. I do the Colorado Sewing Workshop there every every year. It's free. Every uh, month it's free. Where is it? Um, it's in Building 61, which is the maker space at the Boulder Public Library. And if you've never been to the Boulder Public Library, now is not the time. But um, after this, we you should come up and visit us. Uh, Boulder Public Library actually has a ton of amazing online resources. And uh, you can actually sign up for a library card online now because our amazing librarians have created a system which... Never, you've never been able to sign up for a library card online through our city. And our librarians just came up with policies and figured out really quickly. I'm a library commissioner for the city of Boulder, so I'm really involved with um, library policy and, and those things in our city. So come visit our makerspace. We have 14 sewing machines, a serger. We have an embroidery machine. We have looms you can borrow. We have thread. We have fabric. Um... It's pretty fun. And all the staff there are amazing people who are incredibly talented. Okay. You can meet Sergio. You can meet Sergio the Serger, who does have a name. If you don't have fancy elastic, which, by the way, if you tried to buy this on Amazon now, you can't have it until June, so don't even try. Um, one thing that's really great, the rest of that T-shirt that you have, T-shirts are made of a bunch of garbage materials, right? It's like T-shirts are very <laughs> disposable. Um, but I love t-shirts because actually all the elastic that's in them, if you have a very stretchy old t-shirt, the cheaper, cheaper they are, the stretchier they are, like American Apparel, old American Apparel t-shirts, 
like um, sometimes like gym membership t-shirts are really cheap and stretchy. Um, anything that like makes your belly very visible when you put it on. Oh, that's a me problem. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, this is, this is my size. Why does it make me look so big, small? Um, so stretch your t-shirts. You can cut those into thin strips and that actually will be the same as an elastic. So if you don't, ha can't go to the store and buy an elastic, stretchy t-shirt, that's the way to go. Okay, did you guys get all those materials listed? Fabric, something stretchy, some kind of scissors, those kind of things, okay? Um, all right, go find your materials, get them together in just a minute, then we're gonna, we're gonna leave my workspace for just a second, I'm gonna show you guys around my studio, because how cool is this? We all get to do a little bit of a studio visit today. We're gonna do like a, like a quick sesh of a studio visit, if that's okay with you guys. Give me, yeah. give me claps, give me thumbs. Thumbs. Seems like bed sheets are popular option for making masks. Yeah, use your old bed sheets. And there's a lot of love um, coming from people for the Denver Library as well, which I think lets you sign up for memberships online and also isn't just limited to people who live in Denver. Oh my gosh. That's so great. if you want to, if you live outside of Denver and you want to have twice the digital libraries to check out books from, yeah, yeah, I would definitely do that. And and just like a side note for both Denver and Boulder Public Library, they also have a lot of instructional videos through their websites. So you can go on there. So like my instructional video, right, this is a very DIY fun um, video that we're doing today. But if you need something a little bit more um, intimate, something a little bit longer, there's a bunch of amazing uh, online resources and um, and programs that you can use through the Denver Public Library and through the Boulder Public Library. And those are like almost like lynda.com for crafts. There's a bunch of different ones. So go check out those resources. Also, there's a bunch of foreign language classes you can take online through those websites or versions of them. So check out those things. There's so many resources. And actually, as always, librarians are doing so much amazing work for this for your community. So see what kind of resources they've got up for you. Also, I will say, if you like, if you are like me, like to read newspapers that have paywalls, if you log on through the library system with your ID, you can usually get past those paywalls for those newspapers. Dun, dun, dun. That's pro a little, tip. That's a pro tip. Cool. Well, it looks like people are ready for a studio. You guys visit. ready for studio visits? Okay, cool. Let's go. Okay, let's let's start over here for my tool wall. Okay. All right. Let me do. I'm gonna take control of my camera now too, so yeah, y'all can see me. Hey everybody. Hi Christina. Hey everybody. Oh my God. You all are great. Oh my God. Amanda, is that you? It's incredible. All right. Here you all, look at, these are my, stu this is my studio wall. All right, check it out, look at all my tools. There's my mom in the 90s. Oh my God, look at her fucking, out excuse me, sorry my language. Look at her outfit. <laughs> I think she looks amazing. All right, you all ready for this? Hold on, I'm gonna show you a really crazy picture. Ready? This is me, circa 2000. I had purple hair. Don't I look like I could be Justin Timberlake band member there? Right? Okay, totally. All right, there's my uh, Barack Obama that I keep in my studio for good vibes and all my threads. Got a lot of threads here today as well. Okay, cool, come on. Let's see you guys. This is where I keep my patch collection. So these are a lot of my patches. Oh my gosh, D Billy, you're wearing my mom's outfit today? Okay, you gotta send me some DMs. I wanna see that picture. Oh, you're wearing that same look? Okay, cool. I want to see it. All right. So these are my patch collection. I collect random patches. Put them all there. And I made these patches in a makerspace. So you're going to make your own patches. Okay, this is a pattern I cut out about a month or maybe seven months ago. And I never actually made the thing. And then this is where I keep... You guys know Miss Vanessa Vanjie Mateo. She is a drag queen, which I'm quite fond of. This is a weaving I made on a jacquard loom of Miss Vanessa Vanjie Mateo. This is a brocade method. So I actually was able to get the lips, the lips and the eyes, mother, correctly. Um, so yeah, this is one of my uh, favorite weavings I've done lately. And if you don't know, this is Miss Vanessa Vanjie Mateo was the first uh, drag queen off in season nine or season 10, season 10. Yeah, season 10. And so this was uh, the scene 
where she was dancing and when she got kicked off. So I kind of made it look a little bit like cinematic because she says, um, Ms. Vanjie, Ms. Vanjie, right? She does that. So that's why I made it kind of like film. Like, so it's like each film still going along. Okay, more stuff in my studio. Um, if y'all haven't been to the Boulder, uh, um, Pop Boulder B Mocha when the shelter in place is over, this is my proposal for the show that is at BMOCA right now. You guys can go see it. And actually, I'm doing an artist talk on Thursday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time with uh, BMOCA. You guys can see this is actually what the whole project on BMOCA is made out of. It's these strips that I made. These are strips that are basically lawn chairs. They are lawn chair strips. If you actually try to find this green lawn chair material right now for a DIY project... I'm going to guess that anywhere in the United States, it's also basically like yeast or flour. It would be really hard to find because I bought um, most of it. <laughs> this is what's left over that didn't make it to the roof of the museum. Why are you hoarding? I'm not hoarding. It's just like I overestimated and then my return, I couldn't return them anymore. Um, so basically what I did is I pinned this all out. And you, can see, you can see a video of me making this. Um, no, the Be Mocha Talk is actually on Zoom. And if you all send me a PM on my, my private account, which is at Harmony and Bad Taste, or if you send me a message or an email, I can give you guys a access code for the Be Mocha Talk on Thursday. People are really worried about um, Zoom bombing porn bots. So we have to give you guys a passcode and a secret Zoom address. I can't just post it on here. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> that's fine this is my corner of sparkle sticks um there's a lot of sparkle sticks in my corner um i use i walk in different pride parades with these sticks so these have been to many a pride parade including denver long beach la oh my gosh so many different prides so oh uh i did one in montana those are my pride sticks so i kind of keep all those in the corner this is the piece that I wove for um, Union Hall in Denver. You guys can see um, it's a very, this quote is from the whistleblower who started the presidential impeachment um, query and using the power of his office is the quote. And I actually made this whole thing on a laser cut loom that I made at the Boulder Public Library with my collaborator, Janet Hollingsworth. And you can see... I made this with a little teeny tiny loom. It took quite a while, piece by piece, and then I put it all together. The idea for this whole thing is that the construction of it is also part of this metaphor, right? I'm thinking about, oh, if we need to change this uh, orange monster who's ruining things, uh, we got to actually work together. So that's why I made it little piece by little piece and then sewed it all together. So actually the construction is part of the concept as well. I also wanted actually to send a little bit of a uh, a dove, like a peace dove. So I made it gold just because I thought it would be something that he might like, um, but then also he'd hate it. So that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you guys don't know, <laughs> thanks. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, here's another piece. This is actually something I just recently finished. I keep a little, I, I have a little mini looms that I weave on all the time and they're like my diaries. So each of these is a different witty commentary, of course. So each of these, like you see this little thread, these are little threads that I found on the street when we we're actually in Santa Fe, um, which is this one. This one actually I made, I, I think I made these from some threads I found in Berlin. And here's another one. So each of these, this is actually the thread I found in um, Joshua Tree. These are like my little travel journals that I keep. Here are, thank you so much. These are actually the ones that I've made um, every few days um, during COVID time. So these are actually all from the scraps around the house. in my studio that I should haven't shown you yet? Anything? I'll bring the mic, thank you. Is there anything you guys wanna see in the studio that I haven't shown you yet? I can show you around. Oh, let me show you my wall. This is something, this is like totally um, material porn kind of stuff. This is all like, I am now designing a uh, giant 
gay pride flag for the city of Denver for the upcoming show, um, Queer City of the Plains, that will be at the McNicholas Building eventually when things reopen. So these are all my sequins. I'll actually get it real close. These are all the sequins that I bought to construct my giant Denver pride flag. And those are those. Super excited about that project. I'm really happy to be working with it. And this is my other loom, which I'm pretty excited about as well, um, that I'm going to be using as part of it. I have another loom. This is my rigid heddle loom because I'm seeing all my dirty floor. It's a mess over here. Oh, and I was also going to show you this before I do my demo. This is like where I spend my whole day teaching. <laughs> There's my lotion. <laughs> And there is my hand sanitizer. There's so many people in this room. I'm going to have to do my hand sanitizer now. Okay, good. I feel good again. Done. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I can't wait for that flag too. Um, I actually did a little practice test for the flag here to think about how I would use the sequins. So this is my little demo. You can see all the details of how I'm sewing the sequins uh, together with some of the other materials. There we go. Oh, below it. This is a weaving actually I made that was about my like sad middle school dreams of being a cheerleader. Oh, no, you didn't see a cat, but you did see a chihuahua. Hello. 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 She's actually a torgi. She's a chihuahua corgi, if that's a thing. Uh, do you do all want an animal trick before I get back into the rest of the demo? Some animal tricks? Uh, I need some hearts and some loves if we're going to do animal tricks here. Okay, good. All right, Beta, time for your show. Do, 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 Beta show. All right. Oop, beta, sit. Down. Pew, pew. Good job. Sit. Sit. Beta, sit. Hey, sit. High five. High five. High five. Stand. Stand. Okay, dance. 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 Beta, dance. Good dance. Good job. Good job. Oh, my gosh. You are so talented. You are so talented. High five. Beta, high five, beta, high five. Good job. Here you go. Okay, go. All right, that was our pet break. All right, now we are back. Oh my gosh. Beta, you're going to have to do your own Instagram live. You can't take over my feed. Oh, come here. Aw, thank you for your help. Thank you. You are great. You are great, studio dog. Mwah. Okay, back to your bin. There you go. All right, lay down. Lay down. Stay right there. Lay down. Okay. We woke the beast, and now it's nearly impossible to do that. Okay. So I'm going to start my demo. All right. This is my dust mask. Or my face mask. That's really what this design is. And this is t-shirt material. So like I said... COVID-19, you're not going to stop it with this mask. What you will stop is from breathing on other people. So like, if you're asymptomatic, which you could be, absolutely, um, it's really important. So, um, so what I do as well is I actually like mine to tie in the back. For me, that's a little bit easier. I will also say one quick note is that um, I'm reminded quite often that by mostly moms of the world that if you are... A person with facial hair, male identified, or a person with facial hair, you probably will get be healthier and carry less bacteria on your face if you shave your beard. So, what do you think about that advice? I think that is great advice. I think we all have to make personal choices about what we think is important in the age of COVID, and I find comfort in my beard, which is so basic, but that's the deal. Okay, I would love some help um, shooting my table, and we'll show you all. Um, can I get some claps for beards? They're still okay, right? Beards are still okay? Um, <laughs> I'm going to show you all this design. So this is called, what I'm going to call this design is this is called, I'm going to say it's a three-hand face mask is what I'm calling it, even though that's not what it's called on the internet. Basically, if you're measuring it, the way that I measured it, as I'll show you where, where I started on a regular t-shirt, take a good old fashioned t-shirt that you have, like this one, okay? And this one is extra large, which is great. 
because extra large is extra fabric. Like if you're buying t-shirt for projects at um, a thrift store or you're finding like old t-shirts for things, I always like extra large because I'm like, the more fabric, the better. Okay, so what I did here today is actually what you think about, um, what's that trick thing where like somebody puts their hand on their nose and then you hit their hand? I didn't have brothers. I don't know about these things. You know what I'm talking about? Something about if your hand's bigger than your face. Oh, yeah. Face. Is your hand bigger than your face? Or something like that. Yeah, and then you go like that, right? Maybe someone knows. I had sisters. They didn't do those things to me. They did much crueler psychological things to me. Um, just kidding. My sisters are wonderful. D. Billy's a fan of beards. He doesn't want us to be anti-Santa Claus, I think. That's what he's saying. Yeah, let's not be anti-Santa Claus yet. Although it'd be really funny, uh, but not funny, if, if Santa Claus had to be, like, maskless to come into our houses. He had to wear, like, a COVID outfit. So we made, oh, yes, let's start working on that. D. Billy, we need a Santa Claus in a COVID outfit. We should work on it now. We'll be first, first in the game. Okay, so hand measurements, right? So we are thinking about how do we do this at home? Not everybody has multiple looms and multiple sewing machines in their house, which is totally understandable. So I'm using my hand as a measurement. Basically, your body, like if you look at this, right? I know we're not supposed to touch our face. I wash my hands a lot, but as a measurement, right? This is basically covers my face, right? So I'm using this measurement right here on the shirt, okay? So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna take a marker. Ding! And that is my first measurement, okay? So I'm gonna go one, one hand, and then spread your fingers out once you've made that measurement. Flip your hand over, that's one measurement that way. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna flip my hand over this way. Boom, that's another measurement that way. So this is basically one, two, three hands. And most t-shirts are gonna be about three hands as well. And then what you're gonna do is you can either mark that or like I'm gonna do, you're just gonna guesstimate it. And then you take your gold scissors. Not the to... unicorn scissors. No, not unicorn scissors yet. Those are for later. Those are trimming scissors. These are my, these are my scissors that are for, um, these are my scissors that are for cutting. These are actually called shears. We don't call them scissors, we call them shears which I don't know why. Don't ask me. I don't have a master's degree in fibers or anything. I wouldn't know about those things. You're okay. not a library commissioner or anything. <laughs> Stop it. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half like this and like this to get my length. Ding, ding, ding. If you're on the bottom of the shirt, you're gonna leave this on, but you don't have to be on the bottom of the shirt, but this actual kind of edging that's on the bottom of the t-shirt is awesome. It's gonna make a great core. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Ding dong, ding dong. And then I will Martha Stewart to a different fabric. That's what I call it when you have like the second stage of something prepped. I call it Martha Stewarting. This is a one of Jed's old t-shirts from the early 2000s. And I have kept it for some reason because I think I thought he looked cute in it or something. And all right, so back to hand measurements. So if you guys have old funny t-shirts that you've kept around your house, now is the time to use them. You're gonna basically upcycle them into a new accessory. So here's my hand again. So now's the time for, yeah. like, yeah. ironic prints to come back. Ironic things are back, always. We need a little irony. I know irony was over, but maybe it's back again. But now I think irony is part of earnesty, so it's, like, all together. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use my hand measurement again. I'm using this, so there's my middle there. And I'm going to make just a little mark where my edge is over here, or the edge of my hand here. This is basically just like a Thanksgiving making a turkey puppet. You're using your hand to measure my turkey puppets there. Okay, got. I've got two hands on each side and one in the middle. Are you all ready for this? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we're gonna make our mask. So we're gonna start here at the edge. This is no sew. So you're gonna leave about like, leaving like this area should be as, like it doesn't have to be thin, okay? Cause t-shirts you'll see is gonna roll over. Like there, I'm gonna leave about a one inch strip. Like that, one inch strip. So there are actually some materials you can buy on the internet that are better for pre prevent for uh, preventing and limiting uh, anti uh, microbes for limiting microbes from getting through on the fabric. But I don't always 
I don't have that list right in front of me, but it is on the Colorado Sewing Workshop Facebook page if you want that list of fabrics. Okay, see what I did here? Can you believe this? How fast this was, right? Okay, the next step is take each of these little tangles, hold it here, and give it a stretch. This is a really fun part. And if you're doing this with kids, they're really good at like this part. Okay, hold it here, stretch it out, stretch it there, come over here, stretch it out, stretch it out. Okay, so... Are you stretching it out to make it longer or just to tighten it up? I'm actually stretching it out so that the edges will fold over like this. Because see how it's transformed? Now this is basically like a yarn. See how it's actually turned and transformed into a yarn? Essentially what I'm doing is I'm uh, damaging the elastics that are on the inside of a terry cloth. So I'm basically damaging those elastics so that they... Um, fold over and they actually make it into more of a flexible thing. Then I'm basically going to flip it over. I'm going to tie the top and the bottom, okay? If you guys have seen all those amazing medical workers who are complaining of because they have just their faces and their bodies are just being really impacted by the elastic loops that go around your ears, I agree with them. Anything that goes behind my ears gives me a headache. So like even glasses, like sometimes I can't wear them because they just drive me crazy. So I actually prefer this design as you see today that actually goes behind your head. And I think it holds on a lot stronger. Okay, so basically we're done. Ready? Do, 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 do. Done. And then I can tighten this if I need to on the bottom. However, I want to do it. I'm <laughs> like, I'm in this mask forever now. Okay? Good thing it's stretchy. Yeah, good thing it's stretchy. How's my skull look? Does it look scary? Um, you kind of can't tell it's a skull anymore. Mm. What does it look like? It looks, I don't know. What does everyone else think it looks like? So, really important thing with face masks, the idea about these reusable face masks, instead of having the disposable ones, right? So, medical workers, they need the disposable ones. For us, you go out in public with this, when you come home, t before you wash your hands, just take it off and put it in the laundry, okay? Don't leave it laying on your counter, like anything like this, just put it in the laundry. So that's why you might wanna make like a couple of them. So that way you have one in the laundry and one here. If you don't have laundry at home right now, you can definitely hand wash this, totally fine. Put a little bit of bleach in the water when you hand wash it and that should kill anything that's there. Um, and then you can hang them to dry. The thing with donating masks to organizations is that their uh, medical workers can't wear a lot of the donated masks because they're not sterile and they don't live in a sterile space. So make sure to check with the organization that you're working with before you donate anything. Okay, so we have about 20 minutes left. I'm going to show you how to make that much more complex mask. Okay. While you're getting set up, I have CDC information about exactly why they're recommending these masks. Oh, yeah. Why is it? We want an update. What they're mostly concerned about is people who are asymptomatic, who might have the have um, coronavirus, have COVID-19, and might accidentally be spreading it because of particles like when they cough oh, yeah. um, or sneeze. And so by having the mask capture all of that, um, we can reduce um, the infections. So I know there was all those concerns about don't wear a mask because medical workers need them or because you might scare people. But now we actually can wear masks to show that we care about other people. Yay, that's so nice. I love that. It was a little saccharine. Sorry there. No, I love it. It's so important. That's why I married you. It's great. Okay, so you guys are going to do this. I'm not going to show you how to cut out and trace something. Let's hope if you're going to do this advanced design, you will understand how to, you should understand how to cut out a thing. Um, if you don't, that's cool. I totally respect that. Let's chat later, okay? <laughs> Let's chat later about cutting stuff. Um, if you do, can't cut things, don't do this design. Do the other one. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to pin some important things. This is my A. I have A. I cut two of each. And so when I actually cut something out, what I do is I make sure that the right side out fabric that you see faces each other. Then I trace it so that when I cut it out, this is going to be my front, right? So you all can kind of see I'm working on the back right now. And this is the front, right? And this is going to be my backside. So you'll use whatever fabrics you want. I love this orange on the outside. And these masks that I'm making, you can actually, if you need to, take a little paper towel 
and stick it in between the two layers of fabric to create a little extra, a little extra protection, which I think is great. What I'm doing right now is I'm folding down the edges on my A mask. I'm folding down these two edges like this. You can see it here, how it's making it right there. Basically what I'm doing is I'm folding it to do so that it can be like that, okay? This is weird on Instagram Live US and y'all can see all my totally perfect stitches. All right. All right. Cool. All right, so I've got those. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually take my two pieces and I'm gonna throw some pins in. I don't use a ton of pins um, because pins can really mess up your sewing machine. Um, and boy, uh, how do you do they ever? I've totally had needles and stuff flying around in my face. So when you're pinning it, try to pin them far away from the edges, right? I'm not pinning it like, like if you pin this right like this, it's gonna get caught in your needle and stuff. So I actually, what pins are is they're just holding stuff together. It holds it, the fabric from shifting apart. So just pin them like this. Great, great, great. Awesome. All right. All right. I just want to say that this mask that I'm making today actually has already, um, there's actually a really uh, great person who has actually, um, is going to buy this mask for me. They're not buying it. They actually are donating money to Platform uh, to get this mask. You guys don't have to do that. But if you want to donate any money to Platform, you really should. They're, like I said, they're an amazing organization. They're sponsoring this event today with me. And they also support a lot of members of our community. Um, young artists, old artists, established artists, emerging artists. It's an incredible community. Um, so if you have a few extra dollars and you've been thinking about really wanting to um, help a, help a community uh, organization, help them out. They are still actually actively working with youth at home. Some of them actually provided, um, they provide technology to, to students. They all have uh, Surface Pros that they're working on at home, which is so nice. So the students who work with the program. So every dollar you give, it really goes back to the community. So uh, so far today, I have raised, I think I've raised a total of $300 for platform today. So if you want to go on their link, you can give them money. Um, and so that would be fantastic, okay? That's from people you're making masks for? I'm also donating some money, but oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start by sewing face-to-face -face here. I always say face-to-face. -face. Kind of creepy, we always say we want our fabric to kiss. I don't know if we're allowed to say that anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna sew that front edge just like that, and then guess what I get to use? Unicorn time, unicorn time, whoop whoop. All right. Okay, I sewed that one, that looks cool. I'm gonna trim it off as I go. Unicorn alert, okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna take my other, this is my liner, so I'm gonna do the same thing with my liner. Over here, put my needle down. You gotta actually talk in like kind of a cowboy. I'm just going on the sewing machine. You guys know Orville Peck? I'm really into him right now. Oh my gosh, what's up, sewing machine? You're giving me some drama. Oh, I know what I did. Come on. There we go. My settings are off. Perfect. And I'm not doing a back stitch. Or I am. I did just a teeny tiny back stitch there. Perfect. Okay, I got this design, looking cute, looking cute. So if someone were gonna do this by hand while watching a bunch of Netflix, yeah. how, like, how careful do they need to be about their hand stitching? Um, you're gonna wanna do a, you're gonna wanna do just a straight stitch along here. And you can be as careful as you want. It's just gonna, it's gonna be a hand stitch that's gonna go along here and you wanna make it pretty tight. You could do a blanket stitch that's along here as well. Any of those stitches would totally work. I would make sure that you, one of the things, if you're hand sewing it, you want to have somewhat of a seal on this. So don't use like embroidery floss on this, mm. right? Because basically, see now, it's like that. Okay, so you all, one thing that you might want to do now is to iron this out. One thing that I do when I sew two seams together is I go through with my finger to make sure that I 
actually sewed it and there's no gaps in my hole. So you can see I'm sewing it. That looks good. Okay, so here's a weird thing that I do. Let's come over to the ironing board, please, beautiful assistant. Sorry if I um, objectify you again. So my good friend Kathy Lane, who is a employee at the Builder Public Library, she gave me this. What is that? This is called a tailor's ham. It is, it is, it is gold. Have you ever wondered, like, how do you iron something that is round, right? Like a like a shoulder pad. Or something like this you use a tailor's ham so I use my ham and I'm gonna iron this out flat a little bit with my tailor's ham I need to go ahead and imagine that people shouldn't be ordering these off Amazon don't order a tailor's ham but if you can often find them at thrift stores I've I've seen them before I usually get them for people when I find them because I'm gonna sew this seam out right here I get them for people when you find them because um, they are people find them in like their grandma's house when they clean it out after she passes away or whatever and that is makes them kind of full in the store okay i got those iron those edges let's come back over here what's an alternative way that people should do that um you don't have to do it i'm just being fancy quick thing that you always want to do when you sew your ham i'm going to put a couple of these notches in there i forgot to do that before where were you putting those i'm putting them one here so like on the middle? Uh, yeah, it basically at the top of a curve. What this is doing is it's going to prevent it. It's going to allow, it's going to release the surface tension and allow it to curve. So now you can see I actually have a much better curve than it did before. Hmm. It's a nice curve. It actually helps you give that space. So anytime you have a corner that you turn on a thing, that's what you want to do. Okay, cool. Let's sew these edges here. I'm going to sew this edge in here. I'm going to pull my needle out. Make sure you get your cushion out. Do this really quick. Okay. All right. Jed, is there anything I need to be talking about while I'm doing this? He might want to explain to D. Billy why you should not be using a real ham instead of a tailor's ham. Um, Although iron cooked ham could be, I don't know, we might come to that. You know, I mean, an iron cooked ham could be problematic. Um, I don't think that it's vegan, first and foremost. Plus, the environmental impact of the dairy industry and the meat industry, we don't really want to worry about that right now, but it's pretty bad. Although, I do eat ham, so... I'm it's not... also not reusable. Ham is not reusable, it's true. I mean, it is multi-purpose. I guess that's reuse. The ham stain that would be on your face mask would be really oh. gross. The ham stain. You'd have to explain that to everyone when you went out in public. It's true. Um, I feel like this is the moment where the English professor makes like a Hamlet kind of pun at some point, but I'm not there. That's the, that's like, that's like the party we would be at and the English professors would laugh with their like Hamlet joke, right? Hashtags professors of Boulder. Professors of Boulder. Yeah. When you go to a Boulder professor party, have your, have your Hamlet jokes ready. Okay. I sewed those edges down. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to use my unicorn trim. Actually, usually it's like, yada, yada, colonialism. Ha, 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 And then everybody laughs. <laughs> or blah, 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 problematic. Ha, 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 ha. And then everybody laughs. Okay. Um, there I am. Hello, colleagues. Sorry if I made fun of our humor. All right. Cool. So. So you just sewed over those little pieces that you're going to put elastic through. Is that right? Yep, I sewed over these little pieces. I'm going to fold them over with the elastic in a minute. But first, what I'm going to do is, well, I could do that now. Well, let's do this first. So first, what I'm going to do is actually sew my two pieces together like this. So you're going to actually find your pins again. See, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that those edges are aligned. Well, we need to focus for just one moment. Do Okay. Okay making sure those edges are aligned and I'm gonna actually throw a few pins in there. But not too close. Uh, not too close at all. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. That's the thing with sewing, usually you gotta start with your, I like to try to start with the middle and then work my way out. Cause if you start at the edges, it's a mess. Like when I started sewing, I'd always measure from the, I'd always like do everything measuring from the edges and it would be like, why does this sleeve 
not work very well. Um, yeah, that's why. All right. I'll throw in a few pins in. I know we only have a little time left. I'm gonna try to speed, I'll speed myself up. Enough yik, enough yik yak. If you don't eat pork, you don't need to do hams. Okay, everybody? That was like, no need. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Okay, so I've got my two edges there. I am going to make sure again, like faces, face like mages faces. I'm gonna stitch a little, then I'm gonna do a little back stitch. And I'm gonna sew all the way along this edge. Now, remember, this is a functional garment that is serving a very particular purpose. So if yours has loose threads or is kind of funky in spots, that's great because you made it yourself. This is like, this is a great moment where we have to re-examine our sort of iPod aesthetics of everything looking like it's perfectly made from a factory. So don't stress out over your perfectly finished edges and mask, okay? And embrace pink yeah, thread. Yeah, embrace pink th thread. Can you tell I buy it in bulk? <laughs> I was like, which, which, which thread color, pink or green today? It's like... So I sewed the top and the bottom. If you notice, I'm gonna do the back stitch there. On this mask, we are almost done. It's actually, that wasn't super bad, right? We did okay. All right, so I'm gonna trim my edges, trim to trim, trim. Got it, got it, trimming it up. Taking out my pins. You don't wanna put a pin in your mouth, that's terrible. Unless you're some sort of awesome unemployed sideshow worker, which would be very, be, will be very best side for you right now. All right, so what I'm doing now, cause I have, these are both like out, out, inside out. I'm going to flip it. So that, now I'm almost done. Check out my cute mask. And I have this little space on the inside, which I'm gonna leave open, that I can put a paper towel or, you know, a filter or something. Uh, people have been using coffee filters. I don't know how effective that is. You'd have to look that up. Okay, one quick thing I've gotta do is I like to go now and do another Ham ironing. Do do do, get your ham on. Mm -hmm. My iron is like turned off, so I'm not, I'm basically just dripping water on this, but we'll just say it's working. All right. So this edge. I'm gonna sew this end, iron this edge. Anytime you're sewing, it, basically what they say is sew and press, sew and press, because every it's not so impressed, it's sew and depress. Okay, not so <laughs> impressed, because um, you clearly are not impressed with my sewing. Um, but basically, that's to get these nice edges. Okay, now we have a pro tip for everybody. If you want to get that, that nice hospital, um, hospital nose arc look, you can take a pipe cleaner laying around your house and or like a twist tie that you would use on bread or something. Put it in here. And I'm gonna actually sneak this up into where my nose is and kind of center it. I told you all this is the pro one, okay? This has got a little metal lining in it. This is fancy stuff, okay? I'm gonna kind of scoop it up a little bit so it's like that. And I will throw a very close pin in there. I know I said not to do that, but this is, I'll, I'll show you. I'm gonna take them out as I go. Throw my thing in there. So on the Instructables online, it says to basically sew the pipe, a, make a top stitch here and then put your piping in. But I will let you, I will tell you from experience, it's really hard to get a little um, metal thing into your, um, into your mask once you've already sewn it. So just put it in first and then sew it in. So I've got my pipe cleaner in there. I'm gonna sew this up. I'm gonna leave about an eighth of an inch on that edge with the pipe cleaner in there. I'm gonna pull my needle out as I go. 
And this is very soft metal, so if you do sew over it, it's fine. You just might need to get a new needle sooner than later. So that edge up there, done. Needle up. Sweet. You're gonna do another top stitch on the bottom. Told you all this is the pro one. Awesome. Okay, now we gotta put our elastics on. These are the elastics that I choose to use. So I'm gonna say my elastic is gonna be, let's see, how long did I make it here? Now I'm like, hmm, why don't I measure it again? I'd say that is about, we'll say 24 inches. I like things that are in 12s. So I'm gonna cut about a 24 inch piece of elastic or a 24 inch piece of t-shirt cord if you're using t-shirt cord, which is totally fine. I'm gonna take my elastic and then since I've cut it 24 inches, then I'm gonna cut it in the middle. Then I'm gonna go here on my t-shirt edge. I'll sew one here and backstitch. Got to do the back stitch so that it stays in nice and strong. So you're just sewing it on the end, and then you're gonna fold it over later. Is that right? Yep. Okay, we got two minutes. We're doing it. We can We're do this in two minutes. We can do this in two minutes. Okay, and everybody. Maybe we can hang around for some Q and A if people yeah, have questions. Yeah, we can hang around for a little Q and A. We can do that as well. So everybody, make sure that they might cut us off at sixty. I think. Oh huh. well. So I remember I sewed mine. So I have one on the top. Sewed this way, right? This side to this side. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Could you adjust this and do it uh, to go around the back of your ears if you preferred that? Yeah, you could do that. I don't know why you would do that. It sounds painful, but yes, you could totally do it. Sorry, that was shady. But yeah, do what works for you. Maybe some people don't want to mess with their hair. That's true. I totally respect that. They don't have your fade. I do have a fade, but oh my gosh. Maybe it won't be around very much longer. All right. Stay tuned for next month when we do our own haircuts. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Okay. Now the really cool thing to do is I'm gonna finish this off by just like folding this edge over here. And which way do you fold it? I'm gonna fold it so that I hide my seam. So gotcha. I'm just gonna fold it like that. And then put it on my machine. I'm not even pinning it. That's pro move. Pro move, no pins, back stitch. Oh my gosh, I feel like reality TV show. Oh my gosh. Well, except for you didn't have someone behind back behind the scenes making all this for you. It's true, I didn't have somebody making all this for me. Or did you mean more like Project Runway? I mean more like Project Runway, but like- Corona edition. Corona edition, Project Runway. Oh my gosh, is that a thing? That is a thing. So, and even like Project Runway, literally, Instagram just gave us a timer. Okay, how much time is left, Instagram? One minute and 45 oh seconds. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. All right, so before I finish up, y'all see my mask. You can put some liner in there. Looks like we totally did it. Okay, claps for me. Thanks, everybody. We did it. Claps for them. Claps for you all. And you even got a pipe cleaner in there to I've hold it pipe around your in there nose. To adjust my nose. So just really quickly, I want y'all to remember to support Platform. Log on to their website, right, and go to the link in the profile if you want to give money to um, Platform today or ever. Support their programs, and they're also supporting our community for us. And thank you so much, Platform, for having me be on your Instagram Live today. Um, I hope everybody had a good time making masks and um, feel free to send me a message at Harmony in Bad Taste and I'll be happy to answer any of your sewing questions and sewing needs. All right, everybody, any last questions before we log off? Yeah, we have just about a minute left. Anybody have any questions? Okay, cool, I'm glad this was helpful. I love you all, stay safe. I'm gonna remind everybody, wash your hands and call your friends. Love you. Bye.